Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Just a second, please. Some internet issues here. Sorry, I think I'm okay now. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Simone Ferreira. I'm an Education SE advisor in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I'm going to switch to Portuguese uh, and I'm going to briefly talk about Education SE. Then I'm, I'm going to switch to English again. Uh, boa tarde, pessoal. Muito prazer, meu nome é Simone Ferreira, eu sou orientadora da Education SA na PUC Rio de Janeiro. É um prazer estar com vocês essa noite, uh, nesse webinar com os representantes de Virginia Tech. Um, nós estamos num momento bastante importante, que é o momento de comemoração da Semana de Educação Internacional, onde os centros de Education SA do Brasil estão fazendo vários eventos. Uh, este evento e vários outros que acontecerão durante a semana. Então, convido a todos vocês a visitarem a agenda do nosso site, www.educationsa.org.br, onde vocês podem ver a nossa agenda de eventos. Uh, Lembre-se que estudar nos Estados Unidos é super possível, existem várias oportunidades, os centros de Education SA podem ajudar vocês é, nessa jornada, nessa empreitada, na candidatura Uh, a programas de mestrado, de doutorado, de graduação, enfim, procurar oportunidades de estudos nos Estados Unidos, tá bom? Então, with no further ado, I'm going to switch to English. It's a pleasure to be here uh, tonight hosting the representatives of Virginia Tech. Um, and we have here with us Dr. Janice Austin, the Assistant Dean and Director of Admissions and Academic Progress uh, at Virginia Tech. We have Dr. Trinita Lee, Director of the Office of Recruitment, Diversity and Inclusion Graduate School. We have Pamela Smart Smith, Director of the Advantage VT Masters Pathway Program, Language and Culture Institute at Virginia Tech. And we have Sebastian Kempf. Uh, it's a, Sebastian is a, he's a PhD candidate at the Geoscience Department. So thank you for being here, you all being here with us tonight. I'm going to mute my mic and the floor is yours. Mute it. Okay. All right. So thank you for the introduction. Again, I'm Dr. Sharnita Lee, and I'm Assistant Dean and Director for the Office of Recruitment, Diversity, and Inclusion um, at Virginia Tech. So I first wanted to kind of give you a feel about what Virginia Tech is all about, and then get into a few more specifics about tips and, you know, some things you can do now as you're considering graduate school. And feel free to ask questions throughout the chat. Um, if you want to place in the chat, I know Dr. Austin also is on there, we know the answers as well. Um, so please feel free to utilize the chat space to um, type out any questions you may have. Um, so um, my office is the Recruitment, Diversity and Inclusion. So um, Dr. Austin and myself work closely together since she's with the admissions part. So I work to recruit students, let them know about Virginia Tech and the different opportunities we have. And then once they're here as a student, my office does support programming to um, basically ensure you meet your goal of finishing your degree. Um, so really a lot of retention support, um, making sure you have an ally and a support system on campus to assist you as you navigate your graduate school experience. Um, so some of you might be wondering why graduate school? Um, definitely regardless of what program you're looking into, it is a research component, especially at Virginia Tech. Um, and with grad school, it might be a requirement for different positions that you're thinking about. And maybe now you don't know exactly what role you would like to have in different organizations, but if you're looking at a leadership role and want to move up with time, then graduate school is a great option to provide you the opportunity to do that. You may want to teach at a college level. You might have your favorite professors now, or maybe you want to teach online, who knows? Um, but definitely if you like teaching and sharing information with others, whether it's verbal, whether it's through writing, um, grad school will definitely prepare you and give you some of those training skills that you need for that. And then lastly, um, it's projected that you have a higher lifetime income um, if you have a graduate education versus if you only have a bachelor's education or associates or even just only a high school education. Um, and that's definitely more prominent in some of the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics fields. 
So when choosing a grad school, um, such as Virginia Tech, but definitely broadly speaking, is you first need to identify your academic interests. Um, the great thing about Virginia Tech is we offer a lot of different programs. So um, even if you're a student that feel nothing we have matches, we do have an individualized PhD. So we do have something for you if it requires maybe integration of multiple fields. We also have some interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary programs. So if you're interested in math, also biology, and maybe even some language and cultural influence, you can blend all those together for, for your graduate experience. And when looking at institutions, you don't wanna just say, hey, here's the state I wanna be in, or here's the city um, that I'm looking at. You also wanna make sure that you research the programs and not only the institution, because the program is where you're gonna get your degree, and that's where you're gonna have, be immersed basically in the culture um, with the faculty members and with other students. Make sure that there's faculty members that share your interests. Um, you might be one of those type of students that's flexible. You have a lot of different interests. So make sure that there's some ongoing research efforts that, that you find exciting and that you can see yourself working on for a period of time. Um, and sure that your qualifications match the typical student profile. Um, that's not really a rule of thumb necessarily for every program, but you want to make sure that it's a good match. So if it's a biology or science-based program, have you had science or biology before? And if not, what can you do now to better prepare you for that type of program? Definitely right now, websites have a lot of information, a lot of content. So you wanna make sure that you take time to review that, get a feel for what is the focus of the program, what's the timeline of the program, where are their graduates going? All right, all of that information is on their website. So again, you know, if you're gonna be doing a master's degree or even a doctorate, um, you're gonna be there for at least one and a half, two years. So you wanna make sure that there are some things that are of interest to you ongoing with that particular program. And while right now you can't possibly physically visit the campus, we have virtual um, tours on our website and also on our YouTube. So you can get a feel for one of our campus locations, which um, is in Blacksburg and that's our largest campus um, site. Um, so key elements to consider when choosing a program first is the faculty quality of the research. Um, you don't want to work on something and we don't have the tools to make sure that that project is successful because that is not fun for grad students if that happens. Um, you definitely want to know the time towards degree. Um, again, we're a very kind of transparent graduate institution. We have that information online. So if you want to say I want to major in um, geography or geosciences, I'm used to that. <laughs> if you're interested in that, you can see the average amount of time it takes for a student to finish that degree. And that's important. If you see that it takes much longer than it should, run away from that program or grad school, right? So you wanna make sure that you have an idea, put it out there, make sure you have an idea of what it takes to finish that degree. And also what's the requirements. You don't wanna kind of be wandering just around in grad school, taking classes just for the fun of it and their expenses. So you wanna make sure you have a plan and you know what you're trying to achieve. Again, think about numbers of students in the program. Um, my programs tend to have, you know, a smaller number of students. So you really have a great opportunity to get to know your cohort and those can become your, you know, your friends. That's your network as you, once you finish your degree. Um, and also availability of funding and financial aid, which is also important when thinking about how to pay for your graduate education. So this is our grad school by the numbers and it's a lot of figures and images, but I'm just gonna roughly go through some of this. So we have about 6,000 students, um, graduate students that we serve. A majority are full-time. And we do have some students that are part-time, so they're taking classes, they're also working and have, you know, other commitments that they're juggling. Uh, with our students, 33% of them are over 30 years old. So there really is no traditional type students. Students all have different paths, different stories, different experiences. Some had a whole career, retire, and now want to start something different. Um, so grad school is a great way to, again, prepare and train for whatever you desire to do next. 68% of our students are in the Blacksburg campus, which is in rural Southwest Virginia. Um, so that is our largest uh, campus site. And you see our students do doctorate programs, masters, certificates, or sometimes they even do combination of that. Um, we have 31% of our grad students are international. So representing 100 countries. And you can see the top um, five countries listed there. Um, so long story short, our, we have a lot of options for students, whether it's through our over 170 programs, through the variety of different faculty members we have that teach. Um, we have research institutes, we have colleges. So we have something for everyone. Um, and our alumni are all over the whole globe, right? Not just in Virginia. And we have excellent networking opportunities for our graduate students with alumni. So if you kind of reach that point of like, what's next? what happens once I'm part of the Virginia Tech fold, you have the opportunity to continue to connect with others and broaden your, your network. 
So think about grad school specifically, I just want to highlight a few things that we have that is unique to us. Um, one is our diversity scholars program. So while you're part of our grad community, no grad community is perfect, I'll also put that out there, but we like to make sure that our students are actively involved in that. So if you have ideas, most of you probably have ideas of things you would like to change at your home institution or something that can be improved for the next generation of students that go to your institution. So it allows students to propose projects and they implement those projects as it relates to diversity, inclusion, and or equity. Because um, we know representation does matter, knowing your voice, your space, regardless of what discipline you're pursuing is important for our students. We have a lot of community events right now, they're virtual, but it's a way for us to connect and see students and make sure, again, they feel like you know, they're not isolated. They're not being an imposter for trying to pursue a graduate degree. Maybe they're first generation student and no one else in their family has graduate education. So finding others that are going through similar experiences can also provide that support. And then lastly, um, an exciting, I hate to say exciting with requirement, but it is, it's showing again our commitment to inclusion and diversity. Um, so once you all probably at some point start, if you decide to choose Virginia Tech, um, that is something that is implemented across all of our departments and programs. So that's another way to think about inclusion diversity, not just from the global context or even looking at the news or something like that, but it's also related to what does it look like in your particular discipline. So it's not just saying we believe in inclusion and diversity, it's also making sure that courses are developed, seminars, things that are specific to programs. So um, that's an, another initiative that we're excited about because most students say, you know, we believe in this, but do our faculty members believe in this? So that is one of our commitments as an institution to diversity and inclusion. Um, we have, we can't eat on campus now too much, but we have uh, great food on campus. Um, we're ranked number 14 for happiest students. Um, I guess for grad students, depend on the day you ask them, but mostly <laughs> they'll be happy. Um, we are number 17 for best alumni network. Um, we have an excellent library and research resources. Um, I mean, it's state of the art, honestly. If you're trying to find an article, if you need access to something, we have an excellent library staff. They have research efforts, how to store data. So it's not really traditional, just check out a book and read it and bring it back type of library. Um, we also have excellent research facilities. Our graduates are successful, they're everywhere. Myself and Dr. Austin graduated um, through the graduate school programs at Virginia Tech in different disciplines. So we're both alumni of Virginia Tech. So we are extremely biased in that sense. And also, okay, uh, Pamela is also alumni. And then of course, Sebastian will soon to be since he's a PhD candidate. Um, so we definitely can speak on, you know, transition from small schools to larger schools and some of the differences and things that you have access to while at Virginia Tech. All right, so I'm going to the next part real quickly because I know other people have to talk and have fun. Um, so one is uh, four tips to improve your grad school application. Um, so the first and probably the most important step is preparation. Um, I know, you know no one likes to really prepare, think out things, map out because maps and plans change, but you wanna make sure that you start early and develop a plan. Every student that says they wanna look at grad school, I'm like, make a spreadsheet, know what you need, when is it due? Because you don't wanna just keep making sure you think you know what's required and then you can't go back to it and get feedback and advice from others if it's just like yes i'm applying somewhere so make sure that you prepare even if you're a senior right now it's not too late to prepare even if you finish your bachelor's and decide you want to pursue grad school it's not too late to prepare either so we know every student has again different times in which grad school is best for them um the next tip is the personal statement and statement of purpose and I will say by far, if I mean with hundreds of students at this point, that is the hardest thing for students to write, but it is very important. So do not minimize the importance of describing, you know, your motivation for going to grad school, why you're interested, because you want to make sure you get feedback from other people and check for errors, make sure you have the right school, <laughs> the right programs, um, make sure that it describes you. And I you know, so again, I was talking to a student about this yesterday, um, but it's hard to write about yourself, right? We're kind of taught not to, <laughs> but that's what you want to do in your personal statement. Highlight your story, what makes you unique, and what's your motivation for graduate school. So make sure you spend time to work on that and don't overlook it and make it the last piece of application that you work on. Letters of recommendation. You want to make sure that you request letters early and be specific to those recommenders. Don't just say, hey, I'm applying to Virginia Tech, I need a letter, thanks. They need to know what program you're applying to, what's some reasons why you're applying for that particular program so that letter can be a support documentation, right, for your application. So make sure that you really have a detailed letter, not two sentences. I'm, I'm the first to ask my recommenders, like, what are you gonna put again? Because I need to make sure you cover everything that I want you to do, all right? And then the last is do your research. I mentioned reviewing those websites, but you wanna make sure you take time 
to, to look at the program, make sure it's a, a place that you can see yourself joining, um, and make sure that that application content, again, is specific. Most graduate schools know you are applying to more than one grad school. Like, I don't, most, some students, you know, they're risk takers, they'll apply to just one, but majority students will apply to several schools. So if you're doing that, again, make sure you take time to review, cross check, make sure everything is specific to that school. And I'm notorious, sometimes I do letters of rec and I'm so mad later if I submit and realize I didn't even change the school. <laughs> so make sure you take time to double check that information. And a list of some other general application tips. Number one, make sure you follow the instructions. Instructions are there for a reason. Um, so make sure you read it carefully. And if there's something you don't understand, make sure you ask someone. Ask some, you know, if you have any support members, whether it's in your family, your friends, or colleagues, or reach out to that institution to ask the questions. Um, review the deadlines carefully and often. Things are definitely evolving and changing. Grad admissions right now especially. So make sure you take a look at that website. Understand what the deadlines are. You might see multiple deadlines. What does it mean to be a priority deadline? That's the one you want if you're looking for funding, right? So make sure you actively look at that website. And that's where the preparation comes in. It's not just a, a one shot, I prepare now and I'm done. You want to make sure you continue working on it. Um, number three, submit a professional resume. Some students never have a resume. Okay, if you don't, start one tonight. Okay, make sure you start a resume um, and make sure you update it. Because some students, you know, it's hard to look back later and think about all the things that you've done. So make sure you add some of that, you know, outreach, student engagement activities, um, the courses, maybe you have some certifications. Make sure you include all of that information in your resume and that is professional. Also, which application you want to be concise. Um, you don't want to ramble, go on and on and on and on, because usually they do have page, lim page limits and word limits. <laughs> so this kind of going to prevent you from doing that, but make sure that you're as concise as you can be. Um, share any gaps you may have, and I don't really like the word gaps, but I'm just using it for now. But any space you have for whatever reason, it could be in your timeline. Maybe you had some personal things, professional things happen. Um, if you have lower grades, for instance, make sure you address that as well. Um, because things happen, you know, you're not defined by grades. So I, I mean, it's a lot of countless stories I have from students why they may have a lower grade. And you never can guess what that is. So I always tell them it is your story. The reviewing committee, is, are they're not going to call you and ask you, hey, tell me what happened right here. They're not going to do it. So you want to make sure that you own your story and you create the narrative around that so they can use that to make their decision about your graduate school um, choice. Take the time needed to reflect on what you want to do with your grad degree. Just because you write it in your statement or you hint at it through several parts of the application, no one's going to hold you to it once you graduate. Because I said I wanted to be a high school math teacher and that didn't happen, right? So you're not held to it, but they just want to know, you know, what's your motivation? What's your drive? What's going to keep you pursuing this degree for two to five years? So you want to make sure you take time to really think about that reflection because those are things that you can include in your personal statement. And once they see that ambition, they'd be like, oh, wow, this is a student that we would like to have in our program. All right. So that was my last one, um, but I'm going to put our emails up there. Um, this is my office email, the Office of Recruitment, Diversity, and Inclusion at bt.edu. So ordi at bt.edu. And then also Dr. Austin's unit, but my office also can get things through that email. So the umbrella email in which it will get to where it needs to go is uh, grads, G-R-A-D-S at bt.edu. If you have any questions about anything, need to know where to find something, um, we're happy, happy, more than happy to share that information with you. All right, thanks, Dr. Lee. I appreciate the opportunity to follow up from what was being said about recruitment and, and those kinds of things with more specifics about what this application may look like for you. Um, so again, I'm Janice Austin and I serve as Assistant Dean and Director of Graduate Admissions and Academic Progress here at the Graduate School of Virginia Tech. Just to give you a little bit of idea of what all the different functions our graduate school um, does for students. So certainly, um, as Dr. Lee was saying, a lot of the recruitment that her office does uh, for prospective students. Um, my office works with admission application. So when you're applying to the school, filling out your application, getting your transcripts and your test scores in, those kinds of things. Should you be admitted and decide to enroll at Virginia Tech, our student services 
office works with orientation to get you started here. Um, they also do a lot of social and professional programming so that you're able to connect with the larger graduate school community to meet new um, graduate students to meet the staff and the faculty um, to build this graduate community that we have as very vital here at Virginia Tech. Our Dean, Dean DePaul, is very committed to preparing students not just within their discipline, but across disciplines and more broadly. And so we have a very strong Preparing the Future Professoriate program, which are for those that are interested in going into teaching at the collegiate level after graduation. We also have a track for Preparing the Future Professional for those that want to go into industry. And so those are some opportunities that while we want you to get your discipline specific um, information and, and, and education, we also want you to be well-rounded um, in these other areas as well. We also help with things such as registration and your plan of study, which are the courses you'll take to earn your degree. Um, certainly scheduling examinations, whether you're a doctoral student to schedule your prelim exam or for all students scheduling your final thesis or dissertation defense. And we also finalize your degree awarding and send you your diploma. So we really are with you in this journey. You'll have your academic program, your faculty and the staff in your department, but also the graduate school is here to help with those um, progress milestones that you have throughout your graduate education. So what's the application review process look like? I'll talk specifically what it looks like at Virginia Tech. However, this is going to be very similar to what you'll find at all graduate schools. So our applications are online. Um, most graduate schools do have online applications. There are some you can request paper applications, but applying online is, is usually the standard these days. Once we receive your application, we share your application materials with the department to which you applied electronically. And those departments review those applications. So at the graduate level, the faculty members in the department to your applying are going to review that application. And once they've made a decision on the application, whether to recommend admission or to recommend not admission, then they will send that decision to the graduate school. And it is the graduate school at Virginia Tech that will issue you your official decision letter. If you were admitted, um, typically most departments do follow up fairly soon after that official decision letter with a department welcome letter and also let you know if they will be providing any funding. And so funding opportunities are provided in the form of assistantships to applicants, uh, admitted graduate students. And so um, that comes through the department to which you applied. So what's this application gonna look like? Um, Dr. Lee provided a number of things to be thinking about. And I think that's a great list of tips and tricks to really prepare you as you prepare for this application process. But in the application, we're gonna ask demographic information. What's your name, your birthday, um, your mailing address and those kinds of things. We will want a copy of your official transcripts showing the coursework you've taken for earning a college degree. So a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a professional degree. We do not at the graduate school require the GRE. However, many of our programs do require it. And so at Virginia Tech, it's a department level decision. So you will want to take the advice Dr. Lee was sharing about um, following the websites of the departments, look and see if they're gonna require that GRE. If they are, prepare enough time to take that test one or two times, depending on what you want your scores to be. So you'll want to um, pay attention to the GRE requirement. For all international students who have um, a medium of instruction of their undergraduate degree was in English, or are from a country that where English is the official language of the country, we waive the TOEFL requirement. Otherwise, we do require the TOEFL. Um, we currently require a 90 on your um, internet best TOEFL. Um, as Dr. Lee was saying, a personal statement that is very important to your application started early get feedback on it um, and hone that down to really be what you're wanting. Sometimes our programs may want a writing sample, which would be something that you've written for your undergraduate or maybe your master's degree um, that can show your writing style and your, and your writing abilities. 
Letters of recommendation are important. Um, those again are a department requirement and many of our departments require three, some require two and some require none. So again, that's another thing to take a look at to see how many letters of recommendation you will need for your application. And these should be for folks that can speak towards your ability to pursue graduate education. So previous faculty, internship or job supervisors those folks that can speak to your um, career trajectory as well as your educational abilities. Your resume, Dr. Lee was meaning, mentioning that, having a professional resume. A portfolio, some of our programs do require a portfolio and what that would be maybe for architecture, it could be your portfolio of drawings or for creative writing, maybe poems or, or works that you have in a book, those kinds of things. And then certainly for international students, um, visa documents and financial certification for when you're admitted to get your um, visa paperwork. So what is being used to make the decision? Certainly a strong academic record, being able to demonstrate that you have the foundational knowledge in your discipline to pursue a graduate degree in that area. Your test scores um, can help contribute to your ability um, to do the graduate level work. Again, we keep saying it, this well-written personal statement, if it's been on three or four slides, it must be pretty important. So again, really hone that personal statement and spend adequate time on that. Any previous research or internship experience you've had can also um, lend itself well to graduate education. You can highlight that in your application. Knowing about the profession and the field of study you want to go in. Um, I have my degrees in education. I certainly would not be a good candidate for a graduate program in say physics or, or chemistry. Um, and so what I know about my field and what I want to do with it and how this graduate degree really is going to get me to my career goals. Again, those strong letters of reference from faculty or previous work supervisors. Um, and diversity, when we say diversity, we mean it in the broad sense of not just demographic diversity, but also diversity of experience, diversity of thought, diversity of geographic background. And so we're looking for that really well-rounded um, graduate student body that can, can learn from each other and grow together. And certainly your attributes. Are you motivated for a graduate degree? What are your communication skills and your analytical thinking skills? As Dr. Lee mentioned, please, please use us as resources, connect with us. We have a very active social media presence. Certainly our email addresses are here on the screen. Um, the organizers of this event have our contact information as well. Please reach out to us. Even if you don't choose ultimately to apply to Virginia Tech, let us still be a resource for you because we want you to find the graduate school that's best suited for you. We hope that you will take a strong, serious look at Virginia Tech. I think we have a lot of programs that may be of interest to you and may work well, um, but certainly we want to ensure your success wherever your journey takes you in graduate school. So please do reach out to us um, and let us be a partner in your journey um, as it fits well for you. Okay, sorry about that. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Austin and Dr. Lee. I am going to just start by saying that I am a graduate of Virginia Tech for both my master's program and hopefully very, very soon my PhD program in education. So like within the next couple months, I'm working on my final edits. So I can speak to the amazing quality of the Virginia Tech um, graduate school from a student perspective um, and now as an administrative faculty. Um, so I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the Advantage VT Master's Program and it is a, a pathway program and uh, let me get, make sure I'm in the right place here, sorry. <laughs> I've lost myself. Um, everybody can see my screen, right? Hopefully. Okay, good. Um, so the Advanced VT Master's Program is actually for students who the graduate school requires a 90 on the TOEFL. And so the Advanced VT Master's Program is for those students who maybe are close to a 90, but 
not quite there yet. And I'll give you the specifics later. Um, I work for the Language and Culture Institute. It is our primary focus. We do recruitment and a lot of other um, different um, global initiatives and different programs, but our primary purpose at the moment is to help students who need um, intensive English um, language skills or um, undergraduate skills and now also masters. So we're a pathway program. The pathway, we kind of take our look at ourselves as a bridge or between an English language program or student needing more English language and the graduate school. Um, there are certain, it's not all of Virginia Tech graduate programs and there are certain participating programs that work with us. It is essentially a pre-admission program to some of the leading graduate programs at Virginia Tech. You study English together with your graduate degree credit hours. And you can earn six to nine credit hours by the time you finish our program for entry into your master's program of choice. Um, it is, once you're accepted into the Advantage Master's program, you are guaranteed into entry into the master's program that um, you have applied to. But that is upon successful completion. Uh, we have multiple entry dates per year for most majors. There are a few majors that require um, fall only, and those will be specified on our website as to which ones those are. Uh, if you apply to us, we usually get you back to you in about 10 days um, and let you know uh, the admission decision from the graduate department. And I wanna really stress at this point, and I'm gonna stress it later on, we are a pathway working with the different graduate departments. So you have to absolutely meet all the requirements, fill out the graduate tech application form and do all of those things that um, my colleagues have been talking about up and up to be admitted. You have to have an undergraduate degree from an accredited institution of higher learning. So, um, and in most cases, some students have uh, expressed interest and they have an existing master's degree. If it is in a slightly different field, that is a possibility, but in most cases, departments prefer that you're not pursuing a degree in English that matches an existing graduate degree that you already have. Another thing that I need to make sure of is very clear is that this is for a master's only level. This is not for PhD students at this time. Um, so master's only. You have to have a 3.0 minimum GPA for most of the majors that are in our program. Mechanical engineering is the exception with a 3.3. Um, and these are the same qual these are the same GPAs that are required through the individual departments. So this is not something that we're setting. It is set through the individual departments. Again, like I said, you have to meet all the admission requirements from the department itself, with the exception of English language or the 90 TOEFL score. Admission decisions are made by the departments and then sent out by the graduate school. So Dr. Austin would be the one um, overseeing that process. Um, we do, the Virginia Tech Language and Culture Institute is the one that issues your I-20 initially and then we will transfer your I-20 to the graduate school once that process is complete. Now, some of the participating programs that we have in the College of Engineering are computer science and industrial and systems engineering, biomedical engineering and mechanics, civil engineering, which encompasses transportation, infrastructure engineering, structural engineering, and construction engineering. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, in the College of Business, we have Accounting and Information Systems and Hospitality and Tourism Management. And the College of Architecture and Urban Studies, and you'll note here it says Washington, D.C. That is because some of these programs are based both in Blacksburg and Washington, D.C. Um, architecture, and there's several options within architecture, urban design, and then urban affairs and planning. Um, so, that this is just a matter of taking a look at the different websites and seeing um, which program uh, works best for you. 
all classes, English language classes do take place or the initial part of your program will take place on the Blackspoon campus. So we do not have those courses for you to take um, out, you know, in Washington and strictly. You have to be in, on campus in Blacksburg before moving to DC if you are in one of those programs. <clears throat> this is an outline. There are three different levels that we offer, and you can see below the, um, these are the TOEFL scores for them. So level three is a three semester program, and this is the one um, where you take the first semester is English only classes. So you'll be taking English for academic purposes before transitioning in your second semester to English for academic purposes with your first three credit class. And then your final semester will be English for academic purposes combined with two credit uh, bearing classes or six credits. Um, there is also level two, which is the two semester program and then level one, for example, if you come in with um, above an 80 TOEFL, you are able to qualify for that program and that is nine credit hours of English, I mean nine hours of English instruction, not for credit and then um, six credit hours of your coursework for your master's degree. And those courses are selected and in, in, you work in conjunction with the graduate school advi advisor for your program. So if you're majoring in civil engineering, the civil engineering advisor will be giving you and advising you on what courses to take um, and will be covering the English portion of it. So it's two different, so we're constantly working with different graduate programs to determine what are the best courses and the best way forward. Here is another um, copy of the TOEFL requirements. We also accept the ITP and the IELTS scores. Um, there are certain programs, accounting, which are listed here, accounting and information systems, hospitality and tourism management, and architecture, urban design, and urban affairs and planning all require that their students for the most part take the EAP 600, which is the three semester program. Programs and departments are able to have, are able to specify if they would like you to take more English. So this means even if you do have an 85 TOEFL, these departments would want you to take that, that three semester program in order to ensure that you have the strongest English language abilities before going into your program. These are the estimated expenses. Um, I think what's really important for me to let you know is that there is no funding with this program. So um, some of the opportunities that uh, Dr. Lee, Dr. Austin were talking about are not available if you are participating in the Advantage VT Masters. This has to be fully self-funded. Once you do complete our program though, you are eligible for any departmental funding as a regular graduate student would be. So you might be able to get fellowships or scholarships or internships or TAs or GA type things. Our entry dates follow the entry dates for Virginia Tech. <coughs> Sorry. And um, so like, you know, how to apply, this is you go through the graduate student application and on the graduate student application, you would have to pick the option um, that says, I'd like to apply for the Advantage VT graduate program and then tick the yes, the X box. And then it would just complete your application like you normally would for the graduate school. This process will flag your, your application to the graduate school, but also to us. And I will get a, a notification that you've applied so that I can then follow up with the department that you're interested in. And then once you are accepted, and this is very important, once you're accepted by the, grad, by the department and by the graduate school, and you get your letter that says, congratulations, you know, you've been accepted to the program, then you would need to fill out our application separately um, so that we can process your I-20 and accept you into the program. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lee, Dr. Austin, and Pamela for sharing so uh, important information. Before I have a question for Sebastian, but before um, the question, let me read here a question that Ana Paula sent. Ana Paula Brazilian student said, um, 
said, hi, I have some questions. If I enrolled one semester in a graduate program in Brazil, but did not earn a degree, do I need to provide the transcripts for it? Does it compromise my chances of getting accepted uh, to a graduate program since I just attended one semester at a university and then decided to apply uh, to Virginia Tech? I'll take that question. I don't, I would say, yeah, go ahead and provide that transcript to us. Um, it helps demonstrate your, your work that you've done so far towards a graduate degree. It does not in my, I don't think it compromises your um, review to be here at Virginia Tech. So it can just show that at that time in your life, that institution was what you were able to attend and now you wanna considering um, coming to Virginia Tech. So we wouldn't see that as a, um, it, it wouldn't compromise your chances for getting accepted to a graduate program here. Plus, too, if you decide to, uh, if you are admitted and you decide to enroll, we do allow transfer credit. So it may be that working with your graduate committee here at Virginia Tech, those courses you've already taken at the other institution may make sense to transfer in here. So um, it could potentially be also a benefit in that regard. Thank you. One question for Sebastian. Sebastian, uh, you are a, a graduate student uh, at Virginia Tech, right? Yes. Uh, right. And how is the life of a graduate student? Tell us what, uh, what do you think about that? Well, uh, what life? Oh, <laughs> uh, gosh, no. what life? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's okay. Um, yeah, so I would say that, um, I mean, the complicated, uh, What's complicated, basically, is not is not the necessarily the program where I am or where you are, like doing a PhD or a master's, but it's the intensity. So basically, that you are there is always something to do, some something to to read. So that requires a lot of uh, commitment, but at the same time, there is a lot of people that are in the same situation as you. So they are a great uh, support. So you, you get to meet uh, people, friends from all over the world. And that gives you, like, it's very interesting. And, and yeah, I, I would say that the university, Virginia Tech, has a lot of, uh, also is a very supportive institution. So, so you, is, your agenda, it's always ethic. It's always, be, always busy. You are always doing lots of things, but at the same time, the university, uh, hold your hand. I mean, they provide all the support you need to to succeed there. Yeah, yeah, I will say that. Yes. Great to know. Excellent. And uh, uh, this, this question is for everyone in the room, but what's the workload of a typical uh, graduate student in your opinion? Okay. Um, well, so, well, in my case, I, I go to the field every year, so I only take uh, courses or classes during the spring semester. Uh, I'm sorry, during fall, during mm -hmm. fall. Uh, so usually for me in fall, I have a lot of uh, classes, but for most, uh, for most of my uh, classmates, for the other students, <coughs> they take most of the classes at the beginning in the first year and then they work mostly on the research. Okay, good. I was going to add, it, it kind of depends on the department you're in and the type of work that you're doing, whether you're in a scientific or engineering field or in our case, like engineering, for example, um, with the master's degree in education, they front, we, we had most of our classes at the, you have most of your classes at the beginning, you know, and you're, you're doing different things in the field, like even with education, you're going out into the schools and you're doing different things like that. It is very intense as a master's student. And there's a PhD as well, because you have one, you know, two years, depending on what your program is of, of in-class study and doing classes, and then becomes the, you know, then you start your research pro process, which is, very, very uh, different and challenging as well in its own ways in that, yes, you have a lot of support in a graduate school and departments provide a lot of opportunities for students to get together and to um, have that support from each other. 
um, but at the same time, at the end of the day, it's you and your research. So um, yeah, but Virginia Tech is, is really, really, really good. And I've always, both of my degrees were really excellent experiences. Uh, Joanna sent a question here. Uh, I got, she says, I got 83 on TOEFL. Could you explain again about the English course? I think the pathway program. Uh, I may take on advanced masters. I didn't understand very well. In case of applying to Virginia Tech, I need tuition waiver. Oh, and then she, she changes and she say, in case she applies, she will need some financial assistance assistance so she would need uh, a tuition waiver and assistance ship that means i must get at least 90 on TOEFL. yeah unfortunately for for our program um the 83 and the TOEFL would be a one semester option if she was in one of the programs that we have but unfortunately jenna it would not um qualify you for assistance ship or tuition waiver until you went from our program or one semester into the graduate school. And then at that point, your department would be the one that would um, determine whether or not you would have a tuition waiver or an assistance ship. So um, for the pathway program, unfortunately, no, there's no financial aid that we offer for that. I wish it was. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Pamela. Questions, more questions? Hi, Simone, this is Jason Cheryl. How are you? Hi, Jason, great nice to have to you here. You. Jason is also I, an Education and State Advisor in Peru. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I just have a question. We had recently, our government here uh, Concitec pays for kind of internships or observerships, I'm not sure the right term, for up to six months. The problem here is a lot of our undergraduates that want to go to their PhDs, they need to fill in that experience gap. So those kind of observerships, are they program, like the, the program director makes that decision or does that go through the Office of Admissions as well? Um, it's not money for a full master's or for a for, for a phd it's basically up to six months to just we just had a student come back from virginia tech doing that program so i wonder what that kind of application would be like could you um clarify for us jason um thanks for joining the webinar um was that student enrolled taking classes or were they just observing or or those kinds i of think things? Maybe it was a lab it was kind of like an assistantship but he was not enrolled. He was not a registered student. Okay, so yeah, that, that would not be an admission application through the graduate school. That would be a, um, an employment hire into a specific lab or, or research institute. Um, so since they were not enrolled as a student, then that would not have come through us, but there would be those opportunities for, for, um, for hiring into a specific um, lab as a HR kind of um, appointment. And then, I guess another question, is that common or do you typically reserve the assistantships for the PhD candidates? I mean, would that displace a PhD candidate if he came, he or she came with funding for this kind of assistantship? I don't think so. I mean, certainly um, if someone had external funding that they were bringing in with them, that actually would mean potentially that additional student would be able to be accepted um, for that for the department funding opportunity. And okay. so um, I don't think it would displace anyone. Um, if someone's coming with their own funding, that's always an, a wonderful <laughs> opportunity <laughs> for that individual, but also for right. Virginia Tech, because we get someone that's really um, yeah. great bringing their outside funding, but it also frees up those funding sources to also uh, bring another additional student into. Excellent. Yeah, and we just had a student come back from Virginia Tech and now he's doing his PhD. So it was it, it worked. <laughs> yeah, we, we had a student that was taking an English class with us, but at the same time was doing one of those type of and I don't know if it was called an assist more of an internship than an assistantship with the vet school. And so that was like um, Dr. Austin said, a position that was funded, I believe, externally from the Brazilian government. Um, 
<clears throat> but or someone in, I can't remember the exact uh, organization and the student wanted to apply for the PhD program so that that's what they were doing but there were still the same um, graduate assistants and things that were high you know the Virginia Tech Medical School would have so Thank you. Yeah, the, the Peruvian government also has scholarships for masters and PhDs. The problem is they won't give you PhD funding if you don't already have a masters. We're kind of Latin America school in that sense. So, and our gaps here in knowledge are usually experience enough to get accepted directly to the PhD. So that's, that's why I asked the question. Thank you. We have time for uh, one more question. No more questions? I don't think so. Um, I just want to say thank you. This was, this is uh, and was a great presentation. Uh, thank you for your time for sharing this important information with us. We are going to uh, upload this uh, recorded uh, video to our YouTube library. And we are going also to share with Dr. Austin, Dr. Lee, with Pamela and Sebastian. Thank you for the session. And I, I hope we can also uh, invite and host you for other uh, events. Have a good night and remember everyone at home, we are celebra celebrating the International Education Week. Please take a look to our website, educationsa.org.br and uh, see the list of our events and uh, find Education SA nearest you. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye.